Hello dear students today we are going to discuss distillation process Distillation is one of the oldest and still most common physical methods for both purification and identification of organic liquids at any temperature some molecules of a liquid possesses enough kinetic energy to escape into the vapor phase that is evaporation and some of the molecules in the vapor phase return to the liquid that is termed as condensation an equilibrium is set up with molecules going back and forth between liquid and vapor at higher temperature more molecule possesses enough kinetic energy to escape which results in the greatest number of molecules being present in the vapor phase if the liquid is placed into a closed container with a pressure gauge attached one can obtain a quantitative measure of the degree of vaporization this pressure is termed as vapor pressure of the compound and can be measured at different temperatures according to the need only molecules energetic enough to overcome the forces which hold them in the liquid phase can escape into the vapor phase distillation can also termed as a separation process that involves heating a liquid to its boiling point transferring the vapor to a different portion of the apparatus and then condensing the vapor collecting them as a condensate in another container the technique is most useful for separating a mixture of liquids when the compounds have different boiling points industrially distillation is the basis for the separation of crude oil into various more useful hydrocarbon fractions chemically distillation is the principal method for purifying liquid for example some solvents a mixture of solvents for performing reactions etc going towards the distillation curve it is a plot of temperature versus volume of distillate as the distillate on an unknown mixture is carried out the experiment records the temperature of distillate as soon as the first drop is collected and every several drop thereafter once a data is collected a graph is made that is known as distillation curve going we are now seeing distillation of a pure liquid a pure liquid has a constant boiling point as long as liquid and vapor are in equilibrium in a simple distillation of a pure substances as the temperature rises the vapor pressure increases as the vapor expands is it passes out of the heated portion of the apparatus until it comes into contact with the cold surface of the water cooled condenser when the vapor is cooled it condenses and passes down the condenser into the receiver now we are looking to this distillation of a mixture which is the distillation process or the separation process of the mixture of two or more solvents when a liquid mixture is distilled the temperature of the distillation flask will not remain constant but will gradually increases throughout the distillation with a mixture of two that is the liquid a and b having the boiling points ta and tb and different vapor pressure the vapor contains a higher portion of the more volatile component the composition of the vapor in equilibrium with the liquid mixture is shown in vapor liquid phase the diagram which is shown on the screen in this is in this diagram a liquid of composition defined by x1 in this case 50% a and 50% b that is we are taking the 50% concentration of the component a and 50% concentration of the component b has a boiling point t this can be seen by reading up from x axis at x1 until we meet the lower phase curve for the liquid if we follow the t one line horizontally we can determine the composition of the vapor in equilibrium with liquid of composition x1 at temperature t1 this corresponds to the composition x2 in the diagram you can see from the diagram that is 80% a and 20% b note that the vapor is considerably enriched in a more volatile component a this is because as i have told earlier that component a has a higher boiling point that is the ta is smaller than tb and then a is more volatile than b if this vapor is condensed then a liquid of composition x2 is obtained that is to condense the vapor the temperature is lowered from t1 to t2 
If the liquid of composition X2 is allowed to reach T2, it will exist in equilibrium with A. Vapor of composition X3. This vapor, that is 90% A and 10% B, can be condensed and re-vaporized and so on until eventually vapor and subsequently liquid of the pure A is obtained. That is, according to the need, that is, the purification of A can be obtained by the increasing the temperature from T1 to T2. Now we will look towards the Rolle's law. The vapor in equilibrium with a mixture is richer in a more volatile component is expressed quantitatively as Rolle's law. We can also say that the component which has the higher boiling point or higher temperature can be vaporized easily and it will be present in a higher content. When two liquids that are completely soluble in one another are mixed together, the total vapor pressure is the sum of the two vapor pressures that is the vapor pressure of A and vapor pressure of B. The contribution of each component to the vapor to the vapor pressure is the function of the composition of the mixture. Miscible pairs of liquids are said to behave ideally if the contribution of each component to the total vapor pressure is directly proportional to its mole fraction. Equation is seen on your screen. Capital PA is equal to XA into PA epsilon and capital BP is equal to XB PB epsilon. Calculating the total vapor pressure that is P total is equal to partial vapor pressure of PA plus partial vapor pressure of PB and that, that sums the above equations. Where PA and PB are the vapor pressures of A and B, above a solution of the mole fraction, XA and XB and P are the vapor pressure of pure A and pure B respectively at a particular temperature. This type of behavior is often referred to as ideal behavior or behavior according to Rolle's law. Not all mixtures of liquids conform to Rolle's law. For example, a mixture of ethanol and water because the molecular interactions between the ethanol and water forms an azeotropic mixture. A mixture of 95.5% ethanol and 4.5% water boils below the boiling point of pure ethanol and thus 100% ethanol cannot be prepared by distillation. Rolle's law can also be used to calculate the vapor pressure of a binary system. The composition of the vapor in the equilibrium with a binary mixture is calculated using Dalton's law. A mixture of liquids of a certain definite composition that distills at a constant temperature without the change in composition is known as azeotropes. We have seen the definition of distillation and various types of laws that is the Rolle's law. We will move towards the types of distillation columns that is very important as distillation takes place to these columns. There are many types of distillation columns, each designed to perform specific type of separations. And each design differs in terms of complexity, batch and continuous columns. Distillation column type is divided into batch and continuous columns. Seeing towards the batch columns, in batch operation, the feed to the column is introduced batch wise. That is, it is not the continuous, it is the feed that is a mixture is introduced in the distillation column batch wise or in small lots. That is, the column is charged with a batch and then the distillation process is carried out. When the desired task is achieved, a next batch of feed is introduced. Whereas in continuous columns, process a continuous feed stream, no interruption is occurred unless there is a problem within the column or surrounding process units. They are capable of handling high throughputs and are the most common types of columns. Continuous columns can be further classified according to the nature of the feed that they are processing. Binary column, feed contains only two components. Multi-component column, feed contains more than two components. That, that is referred by its name also that is multi-component column. The number of product streams they have that is multi-product column. Column has more than two product streams 
where the extra feed exists and when, when it is used to help with the separation. Second is the extractive distillation where the extra feed appears in the bottom product stream. Going towards azeotropic distillation where the extra feeds appear at the product at the top of the product stream. Main components of distillation column are distillation column are made up of several components each of which is used either to transfer heat energy or enhance material transfer. A typical distillation contains several major components. A vertical shell where the separation of the liquid components is carried out, the column, interna intermate such as trays, plates or packings which are used to enhance component separations, a reboiler to provide the necessary vaporization for the distillation process, a condenser to cool and condense the vapor leaving the top of the column and lastly a reflux drum to hold the condensate vapor from the top of the column so that liquid that is the reflux can be recycled back to the column. The vertical shell houses the column internals and together with the condenser and reboiler constitute a distillation column. The next topic we are going to see is theory of distillation of mixtures. We have simple that is if one compound is much more volatile than the other, the compounds can be separated in one vaporization step. Such a step is called simple distillation and uses an apparatus that consists of only a pot, a distillation head, a condenser and an adapter and a receiver. Distillation occurs when a liquid is heated in a vessel and the vapors are passed through a condenser allowing the vapors to convert back into the liquid which flows into a different vessel from that used for the heating. A simple distillation is considered to be distillation which does not involve fractionating column or one in which one liquid component is separated either from non-volatile substance or another liquid that differs in boiling point by at least 75 degrees Celsius. The condensate will have essentially the same mole ratio of liquid as the vapor boiling from the liquid. Simple distillation is not effective in separating and differ by less than 40 degrees Celsius. It is difficult to separate them by simple distillation. Therefore, fractional distillation is used and it is termed as a process that has the effect of many simple distillations must be used. A fractional distillation apparatus includes a fractionating column placed between the pot and the distillation head as shown in figure 3. If a fractionating column is used in the distillation, it is possible to separate compounds with closer boiling points. The fractionating column is packed with some porous material which provides a large surface area for the multiple condensation and vaporizations to occur as the liquid ascends the column. Typically, any one of the variety of materials including glass beads, metal sponge fill the fractionating column. Condensing of the high boiling vapor releases heat causing the vaporization of lower boiling liquid on the packing so that the lower boiling component moves up while the higher boiling components moves down some of its running back into the distillation flask. Each successive condensation vaporization cycle affords a vapor that is richer in a more volatile fraction. The vapors generated in the pot rise up the fractionating column, encounter cooler surfaces upon which they condense. The condensed liquid is then reheated by rising hot vapors and the re-vaporizes. Re this process of condensation and revaporization may occur again and again as the vapors rise up the column. Each condensation and revaporization re results in an increase in the concentration of more volatile compound. These composition changes are reflected by a decrease in boiling temperature as the mixture moves up the fractionating column. If the condensation revaporization re is repeated a sufficient number of times, the vapor of the more volatile compound reach the top of the fractionating column in a pure form. As these vapor 
move into the condenser, the compound condenses and is collected as a liquid. At the same time, the less volatile compound is enriched in the opposite direction. As the condensed liquid falls lower to the pot, the pot gradually contains a higher and a higher percentage of the less volatile compound. Thus, a separation of a two comp compounds is achieved. Each condensation and revaporization that occurs on the fractionating column is called a theoretical plate. A fractionating column with large number of theoretical plates accomplishes many condensation revaporization steps and very efficiently separates the compounds in a mixture. The fractionating column must be positioned vertically so that condensed liquid can percolate down through the rising hot vapor. This percolation promotes the equilibrium between the liquid and the vapor phase, a condition that allows the column to operate at maximum efficiency and provide optimum separation. The vapors generated in the pot rise up the fractionating column and encountered cooler surfaces upon which they condense. The condensed liquid is then reheated by rising hot vapors and revaporizes. This process of condensation and revaporization may occur again and again as the vapors rise up the column and the separation takes place. The third one is the vacuum and steam distillation, which is commonly used for compounds with higher boiling points. Going towards the next topic that is binary mixture of miscible liquids in which we will see that how the binary mixtures are separated by different distillation processes. Fractional columns are designed to achieve the required separation of fluid mixtures or miscible liquids efficiently. Miscible liquids are separated with different volatile volatilities and boiling points. This separation process is thermal unit operation that utilizes the differences of vapor pressure to produce the separation. In this process, the vapor, vapor or liquid mixture is heated whereby the more volatile components are evaporated, condensed and allowed to drip or drip apart. When two liquids form a homogeneous solution, that is, they do not show heterogeneity, they are said to be miscible. Such a homogeneous mixture will boil at a temperature between the boiling point of a pure component. The exact boiling point of the mixture depends upon the relative amount of the components present. When vapor is produced from two compounds, mixture of cyclohexane and toluene, a liquid mixture, the composition of the vapor mixture is different from the composition of the liquid mixture from which it is formed. That is, the mixture of the two components will have a different vapor pressure than the individual compounds. The vapor contains a larger percentage of more volatile compound of a mixture. In this case, it is cyclohexane. This composition change that accompanies the vaporization process is the basis for the separation of mixture by distillation. As the vapors produced by distillation move into water-cooled condenser, these vapor condense to the liquid, the distillate, which has the same composition as the vapor from which it is formed. The distillate collected in the receiver will contain more of the more volatile compound than the present in the original mixture. If one compound is much more volatile than the other, the compounds can be separated in one vaporization step. Such, such step is called simple distillation and uses an apparatus that consists of only a pot, distillation head and a condenser, adopter and a receiver. When the, two when the boiling points of the two compounds differ by less than 40 degrees Celsius, that is the difference of boiling point is not much more, then it is difficult to separate them by simple distillation, fractional distillation, a process that has the effect of many simple distillation has to be used. Now we will see the binary mixtures of immiscible liquids. The separation of the immiscible liquids by steam distillation is often used to separate a high boiling component 
from small amounts of non-volatile. If a layer of liquid water termed as A and an immiscible high boiling component termed as B such as hydrocarbons are boiled at 101.3 K uh, Pa then the phase rule for the three phases that is two liquids and one vapor and two components have one degree of freedom. Since there are two liquid phases each will exert its own vapor pressure at the prevailing temperature and cannot be influenced by the presence of another. Now we will see the rectification, rectifying columns, fractionating columns and simple calculation related to distillation. Uh, rectification is an application of distillation and its uses includes fractionation of crude oils. If the distillate contained during distillation is distilled again, a new distillate is obtained with an even higher concentration of volatile component. As the procedure is repeated, the concentration of volatile component in the distillate increases on each occasion in practice. This multi-stage distillation process is carried out in the form of counter current distillation, that is rectification in the column. The liquid mixture to be separated, termed as feed, is fed into the bottom of the column where it is brought to boiling point. The vapor produced moves upward inside the column, exists it at the top and is condensed. Part of the condensed is car carried away as a top product. The remainder flows back into the column and moves downwards as a liquid phase. Fractionating columns are generally composed of two sections, an upper rectifying section and a lower stripping section. Rectification in general is used to mean purification or purifying by distillation in particular. In a strict technical sense, however, rectification refers only that part of the fractionation process in which the concentration of the more, more volatile components is increased in the upper section of the fractionating column. Stripping, on the other hand, refers to the part of fractionation process in which a more volatile compound are stripped from the liquid in the lower section of fractionating column or sometimes in a separate stripping column or stripper. In most stripping sections or columns, steam is normally used to strip the volatile components from the descending liquid. The two major types of contacting devices used in fractionating columns or towers are packing and trays. Packed columns are also called continuous contact columns. Use packing that may be grit, random, dumped or structural. Uh, structural sheet metal packing while tray packing also called staged contact columns uh, use trays or plates. Trays used in the tray column can be of many different types and designs including not only conventional trays such as double cup, perforated and wall tray but also baffle, tunnel, high capacity, dual flow and multi multiple and down corner trays. Fractionating columns are designed to achieve the required separation of fluid mixture or miscible liquid efficiently. Packing is usually referred for loads that are temperature sensitive or corrosive as the range in packing materials is wider than the commonly available for trays. Packing is further preferred for foaming systems where the low gas and liquid velocities in packing suppresses foam formation. Packing pressure drop is also much lower than trays. Packing columns are uh, favored in vacuum services and wherever pressure drop is important or where it is economical to minimize it. In addition, packing columns are normally used for lower loads because of the mass transfer characteristics of packing. The mass material in packing and application takes place on a thin film of liquid that is spread over the surface area of the packing. If the liquid rate is high, then boundary layer will increase, reducing the mass transfer. Packing columns are also used for smaller towers with diameter less than 3 feet 
as it is difficult to assess such travers from inside in order to install and maintain the trays. We look towards the tray columns on the other hand have the large columns with high liquid loads. With lower liquid loads, trays can have high resistance times leading to undesirable effects such as fouling and sedimentation. In addition, trays will have difficult maintenance in a good wire loading and distribution across the tray resulting in the lower than expected tray efficiency. For such regions, it is often more economical to handle high liquid loads in tray columns, whereas packing are prone to serve mat distribution problems in large, in large diameter columns. These problems are far less severe in tray columns. Tray columns are also to be preferred where fouling or solid accumulation and deposition is anticipated because of the long history of success trays have had in fouling service applications. Now we'll move on conclusion. Hope you all have enjoyed the topic. Distillation is one of the oldest physical methods for both the purification and identification of organic liquids. Distillation can also be termed as a separation process that involves heating a liquid to its boiling point, transferring the vapors to a different portion of the apparatus, condensing the vapors and then collecting these condensed vapors into the another container that is called as condensate. Theories of distillation includes the simple fractional vacuum and steam distillation. Fractional columns are designed to achieve the required separation of liquid mixtures or miscible liquids efficiently. Steam distillation is often used to separate a high boiling component from a smaller component of non-volatile comp non compounds. Rectification is an application of distillation and it uses includes fractionation of crude oil. Thank you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.